Hey YouTubers, it's Hannah Seba from HR Images. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the 12 to 24 GM lens for the Sony Emon system. So stay tuned. Sony had re re um, recently re released a ultra wide angle lens, a 12 to 24 f 2.8 GM. Now they've already have the f4 version. So as you can see here side by side, the difference in the size. Now the f2 has got a larger bulbous head opposed to the f4. That's because of the f2.8. Now you get, comparing the, the f4 to the f2.8 GM, the GM is a lot heavier than the f4. When mounting on the camera, it does feel slight mount um, front heavy. But in saying that, with the 12 to 24 GM, I've actually, I didn't sort of, the F4 version is really good. I haven't had any issues or heard any much complaints about it except for the distortion level. Now, I didn't get it because of um, the F4, I um, prefer like more wide angle lens, I'm sorry, wide aperture. Whereas when the Sony brought the F2.8, this is something that I would like to get. Now, yes, it has a hefty price tag on the f2.8 but being the f2.8 and a g master it's to be expected um, as i'm going through the video as well i will be posting up some sample images that's captured with this lens in particular now it is uh, with the f2.8 gm what i did notice with this and i'll put um you might i did notice that this handles a better in distortion comparing it to the f4 version now um, I've only got one image sample which I'll, sh um, I'll post and I'll let you know which is which but it probably won't sort of show too much um, difference in the uh, distortion unless you sort of more leading lines than that but just to give you an example of the difference in the image quality they both shot at um, f11 now I do find the f2.8 GM is a lot sharper uh, than the f4 version and being f2.8 this has been a great lens for astrophotography now I haven't tried this for astrophotography uh, yet. Um, unfortunately, when it came out, I didn't get the chance to do it. And it's been Australia now, the season's sort of kind of finishing. It's hard enough to sort of kind of get, so I have to wait till next year. But in saying that, what I did love about uh, um, the 12 to 24 is handles the distortion really well. As you can see with these images, how the lines are straight down. All these images aren't corrected in post for any um, for distortion. And I actually had on the camera settings to fix, they, in the cameras they have this a setting that you can automatically fix the distortion on there. Now that's set to off. Um, if you set it to on, it generally sometimes, the majority of the time will fix the distortion level. But if you have that off, it doesn't, so you end up having to do it in post. I have all these images, they're all being off. And as you can see um, how great it handles the distortion, you know, um, the f2.8, you can get some really nice close-up wide um, shots, giving a nicer perspective. Now, I love, yeah, those of you who follow me, you will see uh, how much I love my ultra-wide angle lenses, but the lower 10 to 18 or the 9 millimeter, I've, everything has to sort of be wide. Now, what I do love about the GM opposed to the lower is the autofocus. The autofocus was a big thing for me as well because when you're sort of on the go and you're relying a lot on autofocus handheld, sometimes with the lower you can't sort of, especially when you go, you're going to be manual focus, especially with constant movement. The manual focus was a um, was a thing, but kind of you, you kind of may do with the manual focus, but the autofocus does help a lot. And the range, the 12 millimeter as a wide angle, and you get the 12, the 24 mil. A lot of people will intend to use a 16 to 24 mil. Um, for the landscape photography, but then if you really want to emphasize a perspective of a subject, the 12 millimeter will do amazingly well. A lot, <clears throat> a lot of these shots, um, some of these shots here I've done uh, when I was in Hunter Valley. As you can see, I was very close up with this uh, T-Rex. Now, it was a very miniature T-Rex, but because of the ultra wide angle lens of the 12 millimeter, going very close, it sort of emphasizes very highly on that T-Rex, making it look larger than what it actually is. And that's what I liked about having the 12 to 24, being able to get really close up to your subjects, as well 
get emphasizing in that 12 millimeter. Now, this lens is not really gonna be for everyone. Um, some people would probably rather go for the F4, and the F4 is still a really great lens, but then if you want the wider aperture and a bit sharper, especially for astrophotography, it is highly recommended for the 12 to 24 um, GM due to the wide aperture. And to be honest, playing with this lens and how well it can handle its distortion comparing it to the F4, you know, personally, I do find that it is worth the money. This, if you're just a hobby photographer and you kind of, you're gonna outlay, it might not be worth it for you, but you know, for those professional, for real estate photography, for astrophotography, um, landscapes, you know, you can also get some great uh, portraits with this as well. The 12 millimeter, um, angle as well as the 24. As I said, you can sort of utilize having that mixed focal length. Now, if you're doing a lot of travel and you want, you want to obviously carry a lot of gear, then the F4 version is really good because obviously it's lightweight, smaller, and it's a bit more compact opposed to the GM. But if quality is what you're after, the GM is really good. Is It's, it's a really good lens. Now, Sony has not disappointed with any of their GM lenses as they've been going out. Autofocus is really quick um, as well. Uh, you've got the app, sorry, you've got the focus hold button here, and you've got the button for autofocus and manual focus switch as well. As you can see in my previous uh, review, um, if you haven't, do check it up on the top. Um, it should come up here somewhere. You can get the hider filters, for the rear end of the GM lenses as well. So you don't have to get the whole holder system. If you don't like the rear filter holder, and you're not confident enough, you prefer the actual filter system, Hide does that as well for the 12 to 24 GM. Shooting wide open, it's actually sharp in the center and it's pretty decently sharp um, on the corners. But when shooting around like the doing landscapes around F11, F8, it gets really sharp. And as you can see with some of these images, going getting really close to the subject, you can get some nice, decent bokeh with this lens. You can do as well for vlogging, but then again, you can be prepared to holding that for a long period of time um, for the vlog for vlogging because of the wide angle lens, 12 millimeter, and you can get the nice background environmental shot if you want while you're doing your vlogs. But because of the weight, it'll doing that for a long period of time, you will feel the weight of this lens. And what's great about this lens as well, um, especially doing a lot of travel and the outdoor as well for landscapes, now, it's got dust and moisture resistance as well. So it helps prevent to get on those debris and stuff inside the lens as you're shooting. I really do love the contrast, the color, the pop that this lens produces. And to be honest, this is actually a lens that I will be adding to my kit. Once it becomes available, they're currently sold out here in Australia and I'm still waiting to get one, my hands on one, but it is something I will be getting. Um, being able to do, be creative with that 12 millimeter ultra wide angle lens and being able to get that 24 mil if you don't want that wide angle lenses. And you can see as the images and how amazing these um, images they do produce from this lens. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick review on the 12 to 24 GM lens. If you did, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Until then guys, I'll catch you till next time. See ya.